We we'll call the regular meeting of the Upper County Commission to order. We'll begin with a moment of silent meditation and prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time we'll have the reading of the minutes of the July 19, 2012 canvas minutes of primary election uh, we don't have the canvas minutes uh, copied we just received those so we'll get those copied to you later on uh, during uh, later on this afternoon we do have the minutes from the 18th also just as a recap of our hearing so you should have those up there so. right ahead Jack. the county commission of upshire county west virginia held their regular meeting at the courthouse annex on thursday july 19 2012 at 9 a.m Donnie Tanney called the meeting to order. There were present Donnie Tanney Commissioner, Creed Pletcher Commissioner, J.C. Rafferty Commissioner, William Parker Administrator, and Jacqueline Dinklocker Secretary. The meeting began with a moment of silent meditation and prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. All motions passed unanimously unless otherwise stated. After reading of the minutes on motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Pletcher, the commission approved the regular meeting minutes of July 5, 2012 with typographical corrections. William Parker advised that there was no report on the agenda item concerning the establishment of the Upshur County Appraisal Assessment Advisory Board. The item will be placed on next week's agenda. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Pletcher, the commission approved the replacement of the high voltage cable at the Upshur County Recreation Park facility. Emergency repairs, as recommended by Greg Harris, Director of Facility Operations, were authorized previously by County Administrator William Parker. The repairs were for the replacement of high voltage cable that goes from the pool transformer to the transformer that services the pavilion area. The approximate cost of the repair is $12,750. The commission discussed the replacement of a transformer at the pool facility. No action was taken. The commission will follow up with Greg Harris, facility operations director, at a future meeting. William Parker provided a review slash status report on the purchase of a maintenance vehicle as requested by Greg Harris, director of facility operations. Mr. Parker advised that the 2004 Chevrolet truck is being considered for purchase. The cost of the vehicle is within the limits of the $15,000 maximum as previ previously discussed and is equipped as needed, which would eliminate the additional cost of equipping. After discussion on motion by Creed Pletcher, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the purchase pending it passing mechanical requirements. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Pletcher, the Commission approved and authorized the President to sign the Justice Assistance Grant Agreement and all related documents in the amount of $20,000. The grant will provide partial funding for the PRO <coughs> Prevention Resource Officer at the Buchanan Upshur Middle School. The Upshur County Board of Education will fund any additional personnel costs not covered by the grant. After discussion on motion by Creed Pletcher, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved and authorized the President to sign the deed and related documents associated with the settlement agreement and release of all claims regarding the Allahack Council Incorporated Boy Scouts of America Civil Action 10-C-42. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Pletcher, the Commission approved the request from the Upshur County Community Educational Outreach Service Clubs to use the courthouse and annex plaza areas on Friday, September 7, 2012. After discussion on motion by Creed Pletcher, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the request from Stephen Linger, E911 Communication Center Director, to assign terminal agency coordinator duties to Carol Dean, dispatcher. 
Her currently hourly rate of pay is to be increased by 50 cents per hour effective July 15, 2012. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Pledger, the Commission approved the request from Stephen Linger, E911 Communications Center Director, to appoint Cecilia Stewart, E911 Dispatcher, as Supervisor in Training for the Communications Center. Her currently at, current hourly rate of pay is to be increased by 50 cents per hour, effective July 15, 2012. After discussion on motion by Creed Pledger, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved wage and salary amounts for personnel of the Lewis Upshur Braxton Community Corrections Program to be reduced to the 2011-2012 fiscal year levels due to current grant not funding wage increases. Payment of increased wages already paid during the 2012-2013 fiscal year will be reimbursed from local community corrections funds and not from the general fund. William Parker provided an update slash status report on matters regarding the contested election petition and response. David D. Taylor Petitioner B. Michael R. Kelly responded. A special meeting was conducted on Wednesday, July 18th at 9 o'clock to consider resolution of the matter. Commissioners have taken arguments under, consider under advisement and are following up with counsel. A final order is expected for next week's meeting. The Commission reviewed the following for your information <coughs> items. Number one, correspondence from the West Virginia Development Office concerning the final performance report for the 2008 fiscal year small cities block grant for the Upshur County Development Authority Industrial Park Sewer Extension. Correspondence from Workforce West Virginia regarding employment, unemployment compensation payments and or awards. Correspondence from the West Virginia Courthouse Facilities Improvement Authority regarding statewide courthouse study. Number four, regional jail cost information. Number five, dog warden activity report, June 2012. Number six, feline activity report, June 2012. Number seven, Upshur County Communication Center reports as listed. Number eight, agendas and or notice of meetings as listed. Number nine, meeting minutes and or financial reports as listed. Number 10, meetings as listed. Number 11, appointments needed or upcoming as listed. William Parker was requested to follow up with various boards to submit recommendations for appointments and or reappointments. The commission approved all invoices for payment. The commission approved all vacation orders. The Commission approved the following settlements as listed. The Commission approved the following exonerations and or refunds as listed. The Commission approved the following consolidation of land tracts as listed. The Commission recessed at 10.15 a.m. The Commission reconvened at 10.45 a.m. Melissa Matheny, Summit Engineering Incorporated representative, appeared before the Commission and provided a review of services from her company for county governments. The Commission discussed a request from Greg Harris for <coughs> part-time seasonal personnel to replace an employee who is leaving due to finding full-time employment. The Commission discussed certificates of appreciation for certain employments, fire departments, and volunteers during the power outage emergency. William A. Parker was requested to follow up with James Ferry, Office of Emergency Management Director, and Steve Linger, E911 Communications Center Director. The Commission recessed at 11.30 a.m. The Commission reconvened at 1.30 p.m. The Commission co conducted interviews for the position of Assistant County Administrator. Interview sessions ended at 6 p.m. With no further business, on motion by J.C. Rafferty, second by Donnie Tenney, the Commission meeting adjourned at 6.05 p.m. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Ms. Wren, not an ask for motion to be approved as such. I'd just like to ask one question. Is, did the maintenance truck uh, pass the uh, mechanical test or do uh, Yes, it's been uh, reviewed and uh, in the process of being repaired and uh, we're coordinating getting the title and check issued. So, so probably moved. within a week. So moved. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Okay, the uh, <coughs> contested election hearing minutes. 
The County Commission of Upshire County, West Virginia held a special meeting at the Courthouse Annex on Wednesday, July 18, 2012 at 9 a.m. Donnie Tanney called the meeting to order. There were present Donnie Tanney Commissioner, Freed Pledger Commissioner, J.C. Rafferty Commissioner, William Parker Administrator, Timothy Stranko, K. Casto, and Cheney PLLC as legal counsel to the Upshur County Commission. The purpose of the meeting was to conduct a hearing on the contested election. David D. Taylor, petitioner, v. Michael R. Kelly, respondent. Petitioner David D. Taylor appeared with his attorney, Charles Crooks. Respondent Michael R. Kelly appeared with his attorney, Frank Hartman. Both councils presented arguments and cited West Virginia code and or precedent to substantiate their assertions. The commission advised that they will review all the information presented with council with final decision to, prevent, to be presented at a future hearing. The hearing adjourned at 11.40 a.m. The hearing was recorded, the recording all submitted documentation and all exhibits to be made part of the record. Okay, any correction or addition of ministers read? I'll not ask your motion to approve as such. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> okay, our first scheduled appointment was at 10 o'clock with Timothy Stranko, legal counsel, K. Casto, and Cheney PLC. To review proposed order, election petition response. So until then, we will continue. Uh, have we heard any more on our establishment of our county appraisal assessment advisory board, Mr. Parker? I have talked to Ms. Phillips. Uh, she would like to meet with the commission and, and her staff uh, at uh, 4.30 uh, this afternoon. So I told her that would be acceptable. She's supposed to let me know if if that would not work out in their in their schedule so that is what she requested yesterday so that'll be followed up this afternoon okay the next item is authorized present sign agreement and related documentation juvenile accountability block grant 11 abg 001 for twelve thousand seven hundred eleven dollars and zero nine abg 023 for two thousand two hundred $89. This is funding that's left over from previous year's other grants that they're reallocating to projects and Upshur County is receiving additional funding. Okay, do we have a motion that we uh, receive this money and authorize the President sign in and all documents? Um, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Favor same sign. Thank you, Terry. Authorized President to sign settlement claim form and related documentation regarding civil action 109 CV 00139 Cather versus Seneca Upshur Petroleum. This is a settlement that basically states that there were certain deductions made that shouldn't have been. <coughs> Basically, the lawsuit claims that the defendants failed to make proper royalty payments under their lease. It also claims they improperly deducted post-production expenses from royalty payments. Post-production expenses include cost charges or gas retained for transportation, gathering, dehydration, compression, extraction, <coughs> processing, fuel shrink, line <coughs> loss, or other related expenses. It looks like there, there's two options. Um, one, you can, we can receive a little over two thousand dollars, and the other one about a thousand dollars. And it looks like the difference is that if you take the two thousand, then you can't be involved in any future uh, litigation. If you take the thousand, they're still going to look like. Well, you, you understand the way I do. They're still going to calculate the same way. Yeah, option. Uh, uh, B is uh, in review with uh, Mr. Rigger uh, is the recommendation from he and I. Uh, the difference between is option A uh, settles all past and or future claims uh, as it relates to how they calculate. Option B we set, settles all past claims that does, does not bar you from any future action. And if there's uh, you know changes in how they distribute uh, in the future. So 
uh, for the amount of funding that would be available, Mr. Rigger and I would recommend option B at this point. Or they're basically going to continue to deduct the same way, right? Correct. You're you're agreeing to the same way. You're just in one option. You're giving up your right to future litigation. So the recommendation is a thousand dollar option, not the two thousand. Is that correct? Correct. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Then we have a motion to. Follow that recommendation. Authorize the president to sign the settlement claim form. So we second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those same sign. Motion carries. Next item approval of volunteers. Office of the Upper County Sheriff Tax Department. Kelly Michelle Page. That's a uh, daughter of a, uh, an employee and they. Uh, have to get uh, some hours for a related to school pro type project and uh, she's uh, 17 I do believe so I ask them to fill out a volunteer application that way they're covered under our liability in case you know, mm -hmm. you know for other actions towards other people they're not covered under workers comp or any type of situation like that okay do you have a motion to approve um, Callie Michelle Page is a volunteer in the sheriff's office. I'll make that motion. Second. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carries. In Office of Emergency Services, Jamie Howes, Veronica Linger, Stephen Wyckoff, Robin Pearson, Patricia Bailey, Heather Lou, Lou too, uh, how's that pronounced, JC? Lucy. Lou. Lucy. <laughs> There you go. So if it's wrong, blame JC. <laughs> Karen Craggle and Dorothy. That's Valdez, I think. That it? is, yes, that's I a title. That was a, an L instead of a K. L instead of a K. All right. They all been checked out? Uh, yes, these all came uh, recommended by Mr. Ferry. Uh, just uh, for your gentleman's information, there were additional uh, volunteer applications in the folder. Uh, one I put on hold pending. Uh, the gentleman had picked up papers to file uh, for the sheriff's uh, race as a independent through the petition method. If if he did that or does that, completes that, uh, I didn't want to be seen as you know giving him an advantage or anything like that. So uh, that was not presented uh, to the commission at this point. Uh, if he does not file, then it can be brought up for reconsideration in a week or two. Uh, and then also there was uh, some employees that uh, had uh, taken the, the class or training, uh, but under the Fair Labor Standards Act, uh, uh, public em employers are, are barred from having their employees volunteer in similar or same type services. Uh, not saying this would be similar or the same type, but and to err on the side of caution, I would recommend that the commission not have any employees volunteering for them for example if you had a clerical administrative position working in one of the offices here in the courthouse and then went to work in a clerical <coughs> administrative position uh, answering phones typing reports that would be similar type services and would be subject to being paid if you know we talked at the last policy board meeting about you know offices uh, providing that type of additional support if need be, and I'd recommend the commission just pay them right. if that transpires. Well, if their duties are functions other than, <clears throat> the example you cite, other than clerical functions, if they were to be involved in aspects totally divorced from clerical functions, would their volunteer service be allowed? Under Fair Labor Standards. Under the Fair Labor Standards Act, as long as it's not the same or similar type services that they perform for the employer, you you, you can volunteer. So uh, if someone worked in the maintenance department and they may have they may have be paid to do certain things during times, then they couldn't volunteer. I mean, and we have that exact that example in, in this situation. There was one of our maintenance employees that did take the train. You know, if they're moving supplies, hauling supplies, you know, handing out water, et cetera. You know, we had our maintenance staff doing this during the most recent emergency, and, and they were paid. Right. Uh, so I would 
proceed very cautiously on volunteers uh, from the employee ranks. That's not saying you can't do that or bring that, you know, we can bring that back if you so desired another meeting, but they, they are not on the agenda for action today. Because I wanted to point that, those situations out. We have uh, three employees that took the training. One was a maintenance, one was administrative clerical, and one was uh, uh, a management of emergency service responding type agency. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so do we have a motion at this point to approve these listed? So move for those on the list that are approved. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carries. Um, next item is approved reinstatement of April D. Smith, full time E911 dispatcher, as of 7 29 12. Currently part time and returning from an approved leave. Vacation balance and sick leave balance to zero, but employee to receive credit for previous service. Any questions on that recommendation? <coughs> Just gives us another full-time dispatcher, which is greatly needed. So we have a motion to approve that request. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those same sign, motion carries. On your next item, Mr. Tenney, you may want to talk to our uh, Director of Operations, uh, or Facility Operations, Mr. Harris, before you take action. So you okay. may slide that yes. down the meeting agenda. Defer that. We'll hold, that, hold off on that then. Uh, re review applications and resumes for position of assistant county administrator. Consider extending employment offer. Review to be executive session with the code 698-4. Action to extend employment offer to be in open session. Um, Looks like that's our <coughs> last item before our 10 o'clock appointment. So we've got a half an hour. We want to go ahead and... <coughs> enter in the executive station and discuss this issue? I think we should, since we have 30 minutes. Okay. Is that a motion? Motion, yep. Yeah. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Same time. Motion carried. Okay. We're exiting executive session and entering regular session. There were no decisions made in executive session. It's 10 o'clock, and we have with us Tim Timothy Stranko, legal counsel, Kay Casto, Cheney, PLLC. For our preview, proposed order, election petition response to David D. Taylor, petitioner versus Michael Kelly, respondent, commission to consider approval of order from July 18, 2012 hearing. And at this time, we're going to ask the order to be read. If you'd step up to the podium, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Before I begin, uh, <clears throat> let me just say that it's been a privilege to work with the county commission and its staff on this case. And I hope that your constituents uh, will realize and come to know the care that you put into this case <coughs> and the time that uh, we've all spent on it. This is the proposed order, Mr. President, before the County Commission of Upshur County, West Virginia, David D. Taylor, petitioner, versus Michael R. Kelly, respondent. Final order. And now, this 26th day of July, 2012, the County Commission of Upshur County orders that introduction. This commission has a constitutional and fundamental duty to obey the will of the people of Upshur County. Quote, I'm quoting the West Virginia Constitution. The powers of government reside in all the citizens of the state and can be rightfully exercised only in accordance with their will and appointment. That's Article 2, Section 2 of our Constitution. There is no higher authority in the government of Upshur County than the will of the people as expressed in an election. Accordingly, quote, the sanctity of the ballot, which is the keystone of our democracy, must be preserved, unquote. That's co quoting the Supreme Court of West Virginia. Quote, the right to vote freely for a candidate of one's choice is the essence of a democratic society, and any restrictions on that right strike at the heart of representative government, close quote, United States Supreme Court. 
An indispensable adjunct to this right and power of the electoral franchise is the fundamental right of a West Virginia citizen to run for and hold public office in our state. That's from our Constitution, Article 4, Section 4. Also Supreme Court case. Without this prerogative, the right to vote freely for a candidate of one's choice is meaningless. Quote, I'm quoting the United States Supreme Court. A fundamental principle of our representative democracy is, in Hamilton's words, that the people should choose whom they please to govern them. As Madison pointed out at the convention, that's the Constitutional Convention, this principle is undermined as much by limiting whom the people can select as by limiting the franchise itself. Close quote. By the lawful exercise of these fundamental rights, the people of Upshur County direct the policies and administration of county government. Quote, the right to vote helps to preserve all other rights because it provides the people with the ultimate means of expressing their will and directing the public policy of the county, quoting the West Virginia Supreme Court. Although the right to vote and the right to run for office are fundamental and essential to our democracy, quote, the state retains the authority to prescribe reasonable rules for the conduct of elections reasonable procedures by which the candidates may qualify for office and the manner in which they will be elected. Close quote, that's our West Virginia Supreme Court. Pursuant to this authority to regulate elections and West Virginia law promulgated under this authority, petitioner alleges that respondent is, I'm quoting the petition, ineligible to be a partisan candidate for political office as a matter of both West Virginia and federal law. Close quote. This commission has no jurisdiction over or power to hear complaint regarding the Federal Hatch Act. Complaints regarding the Hatch Act are under the exclusive jurisdiction of the United States Office of Special Counsel, <clears throat> quoting the U.S. Code 5 U.S.C. 1501. Accordingly, only matters of West Virginia law are before this commission. We are therefore convened solely pursuant to a statutory mandate of the West Virginia legislature that, quoting the statute, the county commission shall be the judge of the election, qualification, and returns of their own members and of all county and district officers, close quote. The issues presented by this petition are, one, whether West Virginia law disqualifies the respondent as a candidate for the Republican Party nomination for sheriff of Upshur County, and if yes, two, whether this disqualification requires further action by the commission in appointing another candidate for that office. For the reasons discussed below, the Upshur County Commission finds that West Virginia law does not disqualify a respondent as a candidate for the Republican nomination for sheriff of Upshur County. Finding the respondent qualified, we find moot the question of this commission's further action pursuant to a disqualification. Findings of fact, one, on May 8, 2012, the primary election was held in and by Upshur County, West Virginia. Included in this election was a contest to nominate candidates to run for Upshur County Sheriff in a general election to be conducted on November 6, 2012. Finding of fact number two. On May 18, 2012, the Upshur County Commission certified the results of the primary election. These results included the election of incumbent Chief Deputy Sheriff Michael R. Kelly as a Republican Party nominee for Upshur County Sheriff. Finding three, a petition to contest the election of Michael R. Kelly as Republican Party candidate for sheriff was filed by the petitioner pursuant to and in accordance with West Virginia Code 3-7-6. The petition was timely received by this commission on or about May 25, 2012. Finding four, petitioner alleges that respondent is ineligible to be a candidate for partisan political office pursuant to West Virginia Code 7-14-15A4. Finding five, petitioner seeks that this commission find respondents subject to this prohibition and ineligible to be a candidate for sheriff of Upshur County. Petitioner further seeks that this commission set aside the May 18, 2012 primary election results and declare the petitioner the winner of the contested election, therefore the Republican Party nominee for Upshur County Sheriff. Petitioner further seeks that costs be assessed against respondent. Finding six, a reply to said position was filed by respondent, excuse me, Mr. President, a, filed, a reply to said petition was filed by respondent and received by this commission on or about May 30, 2012. Respondent denies that the provisions of West Virginia Code 7-14-15 render him ineligible to run for sheriff of Upshur County. 
finding seven. On July 12, 2012, respondent filed with the clerk of Upshur County Commission a certified form withdrawing as candidate for sheriff of Upshur County. Finding eight. On July 16, 2012, respondent by counsel presented to the West Virginia State Election Commission a letter and certified form withdrawing from the election for sheriff of Upshur County. And finding nine. On July 18, 2012, the Upshur County Commission held a properly noticed public hearing regarding the election contest as required by West Virginia Code 3-7-7. Both parties appeared and were represented by counsel at this hearing. Conclusions of law. Number one, this election contest was timely filed by petitioner in accordance with West Virginia Code 3-7-6. Number two, the prohibitions of West Virginia Code 7-14-15A4 do not apply to a person serving as Chief Deputy Sheriff. Conclusion three, because Chief Deputy Sheriff Kelly is not subject to the provisions of West Virginia Code 7-14-1 at SEC, this commission finds that he may be a candidate for elective office of Sheriff of Upshur County. Four, having found Chief Deputy Kelly eligible to be a candidate for Sheriff of Upshur County, the true result of the May 8 primary election is as pre previously certified by this commission on May 18, 2012. Conclusion five, because of Chief Deputy Kelly's withdrawal of July, 20, July 12, 2012 due to personal extenuating circumstances, <clears throat> there is a vacancy in the Republican Party nomination for the 2012 general election for Sheriff of Upshur County. Accordingly, West Virginia Code 3-15-19A6 is controlling regarding this vacancy. Conclusion six, pursuant to that statute, the withdrawal of Chief Deputy Kelly and further the administration of the Republican Party nomination for Sheriff of Upshur County is forwarded to and shall be governed by order or instruction of the West Virginia State Election Commission. Discussion. In deciding whether the partisan political prohibitions of Article 14, Chapter 7 apply to a chief deputy and thus disqualify a respondent, this commission must first look to the plain meaning of the statute. Unfortunately, neither this nor any other code section provides specific description of the political restrictions upon a chief deputy sheriff. Likewise, there is no Supreme Court precedent that settles this question. Because of this uncertainty in the law, the commission may rely upon other authority to understand the legislature's intent regarding these matters. Pre-enactment and post-enactment legislative history is one source available to understand and interpret an otherwise ambiguous law. In 2010 and 2011, bills were proposed in the legislature to amend West Virginia Code 7-14-15 to insert chief deputy. So the old code read, a deputy sheriff, or the current code reads, a deputy sheriff covered under the provisions of this article may not, and it continues with those prohibitions. The proposed statute is a deputy sheriff and chief deputy sheriff covered by the provisions of this article. So we see the legislature inserting chief deputy sheriff. This legislative history is persuasive that a chief deputy is not considered a deputy with respect to West Virginia Code 7-14-15, and thus the prohibition against partisan political activity included in that law does not apply to a chief deputy. <clears throat> the chief deputy is appointed by the sheriff and serves at the will and pleasure of the sheriff. It follows that such a will and pleasure employee is not afforded the civil service protection of Article 14, Chapter 7 of West Virginia Code. This law specifically excludes the chief deputy from its protections. Quote, no person except the chief deputy shall be appointed, promoted, reinstated, removed, discharged, suspended, or reduced in rank or pay in any manner or by any means other than those prescribed in this article, which is the Chief Deputy Civil Service Code, 7-14-1. Because the Chief Deputy is not afforded the protections of this code section, we can fairly conclude that the Chief Deputy is likewise not saddled with the prohibitions of the same section. From time to time, the Attorney General of West Virginia is authorized to issue written opinions and advice upon questions of law. Although an opinion of the attorney, I'm quoting the Supreme Court, although an opinion of the Attorney General of West Virginia is not binding on the West Virginia Supreme Court, it is persuasive when it is issued rather contemporaneous with the adoption of the statute in question. The Attorney General has, has endorsed the conclusion that a chief, deputy, a chief deputy is not covered by the Civil Service Code for deputy sheriffs. I'm quoting the Attorney General now. A chief deputy without prior duty as a deputy sheriff under civil service must follow procedures outlined in Article 14, Chapter 7, which is a deputy sheriff civil service code, dealing with application, testing, and certification by the Civil Service Commission to be appointed as a deputy sheriff. 
In other words, a chief deputy may serve without civil appointment, civil service appointment or status, and transfer of such serving chief deputy to deputy may not occur without application, testing, and certification by the Civil Service Commission. Four years, four years after the enactment of the law of civil service for deputy sheriffs, the Attorney General wrote, quote, it is clear that a chief deputy sheriff is not covered under the provisions of Article 14. We are therefore of the opinion that a chief deputy is not required to resign his position to run for office of sheriff in the next election, close quote. Accordingly, the County Commission of Upshur County hereby orders that, one, the true result of the May 8th primary election is as previously certified by this commission on May 18th, 2012, and two, this case is dismissed with prejudice and the docket closed, and three, petitioner's request for costs is denied. By the County Commission of Upshur County, Donnie R. Tenney, President. Okay, are there any questions from the commission? Concerning the reading and the order? I think there, uh, and Mr. Stranko can comment, I think there were, he did some research as it relates to appointment, uh, one of the outlines, and you may bring that up to the commission, because I know that was one of the questions uh, they had uh, earlier as uh, their appointment authority, so to speak. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. President, the uh, Supreme Court has spoken clearly in both Jackson versus County Court of McDowell County and uh, Hardin versus Heckler, uh, Heckler in his capacity as Secretary of State, that if you have uh, uh, multiple candidates in an election and the winning candidate is disqualified, you may not presume that the second place finisher would have won in an election without the uh, winning candidate. Um, However, this commission is not ruling on that in the order because finding uh, the chief deputy qualified to run for sheriff, then that point becomes moot. And that has nothing to do with the Hatch Act at all? That's correct, Commissioner. Right. Now, as you will recall, uh, Commissioner Pletcher, the Hatch Act is, is in the West Virginia Code referred to, but it's in that civil service section for deputy sheriff. So again, the chief deputy not being covered by that those provisions it's not relevant in this case. Any other questions or anything else, Billy? No, just as it relates to following up on Commissioner Pletcher's, uh, you know, as it relates to the Hatch Act, our order has nothing to do with that federal statute uh, because that's out of your purview and the Office of Special Counsel has issued uh, their corrective action letter options that were available to Chief Deputy Kelly at that point, and those were decisions that, that he made. Uh, and uh, But uh, that really has no bearing on, on this order. It does have a bearing on the overall race, but not this order. I agree, Mr. President, and, and thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll ask then for a motion uh, to approve the order as read. So moved. Second. Any other questions or comments? Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. So we can take a brief recess. I do have some co unsigned copies that are available for the press if they would like those. Okay. I know they couldn't take all those. Let's take a short recess.